Hello everyone, my name is Ibrahim Berka and I'm a technical business developer here at Amazon Web Services. In this video, we'll be talking all about migrating to Amazon Cognito. To begin with, we'll start by reviewing Amazon Cognito's fundamentals. We'll, we'll discuss what it is and also a little bit about what it has to offer. We'll then dive into the advantages of migrating to Cognito and talk about why it should be something that you should even consider. And we'll also touch on a few different migration methods that you can take to help you navigate the journey. I'll then walk you through a more broad step-by-step -step process overview before highlighting some things to consider and watch out for during the migration process. So what is Cognito, right? So Amazon Cognito is a developer-centric service that integrates secure customer identity and access management into your web and mobile applications. Um, it's a service that's highly scalable, scaling to millions of users and hundreds of transactions per second. And it's backed by a fully managed, high performance and reliable identity store. Moreover, it offers things like advanced security features such as compromised credentials, adaptive authentication, and event logging. And you know, as a whole, Cognito essentially cultivates an environment where your users can you know, interact with your application confidently, knowing their data is shielded and their experience is ultimately one that is seamless. So now that you have a better understanding of Cognito, let's go over why it's something you should even be choosing and what the benefits of migrating over to the service are. So the first thing is its scalability and availability, right? So just from a purely metric standpoint, Cognito is currently available in over 20 regions. And on an average day, it's also doing about 38,000 authentications per second. Now, obviously this figure does fluctuate based on different peak periods throughout the year, but as a general consensus, it's doing over 100 billion authentications per month, which if you take a minute to just think about, uh, it's an immense figure. And more than anything, what it really goes to show is the scale of the service and how reliable and available it is as a system that you can trust with your customer identities. Additionally, Cognito security is another massive benefit. So like I mentioned previously, it already comes equipped with features like compromised credentials, adaptive authentication, and event logging. And you know, these are the things that a platform like Cognito provides for your business so that you can have that additional blanket of security to really protect your customers. The other massive benefit of migrating is that Cognito is a core service within the broader AWS ecosystem. So it's already deeply integrated with other services like API Gateway, Lambda, and other various services that essentially allow you to have an overall easier developer experience and faster time to market. Um, and lastly, another main plus is that Cognito significantly reduces infrastructure costs. So it, it operates on a pay as you go model. So with Cognito, it directly aligns your expenses with your actual usage. So what that does is it really eliminates the need for any sort of extensive infrastructure maintenance. So now that we discussed the benefits of migrating, the question now is, if you decide to migrate your users to Amazon Cognito, what are the different options available to you as far as you know the different migration strategies? And we'll go over them in more detail shortly, but to begin with, I just wanted to introduce you to two of the main ways. So the first one is a bulk migration. And you can really think of this approach as structuring users in a bulk data dump. So you will import users from CSV files, and within this process, users will need to reset their passwords. The second pattern is a just-in-time migration, which is essentially a seamless migration of users as they interact with their system. So as users come into your application and sign in or change their password, you can then simply migrate users at that very moment. So now let's go over the different patterns in a bit more detail. So let's dive into the first method in bulk migration. So in this approach, you're going to begin by creating your Cognito resources, most notably the Amazon Cognito user pool, which is going to serve as your sort of main user directory. You then want to establish the user schema, defining the attributes anticipated within the user profile. It is important to note that password hashes cannot be directly imported into Cognito. So what this means is that even though users are successfully imported into the user pool, each user will experience a password reset when signing in for the first time. And really the reason for this password reset in the first place is that resetting passwords as a part of the migration process adds that extra layer of security. So it verifies the identity of users in the new system. And by requiring them to, to reset this password, um, it confirms that the user is actively engaging with, with the migrated account. So once that's set, you can then generate a CSV header from the user pool, effectively outlining the schema for structuring user data. You then want to assemble a set of CSV files that contain the user information targeted for this migration. Subsequently, these CSV files are then uploaded into Cognito, effectively triggering import jobs. Cognito then undertakes this whole process, importing users into a reset required state. And the impressive thing here is that throughout this whole process, Cognito is logging all imported, skipped, or failed transactions that are accessible to you via CloudWatch logs for any troubleshooting or any fixing that needs to be made. Uh, and the real highlights of this approach is that it provides you with faster migration. So if you're looking to simply decommission your previous web access management system and move as fast as possible to the new service, this is probably the fastest way to migrate users. It's also the most cost-effective approach, right? So 
This is because imported users are not active. So you're not actively charged for them until they become active, which means, you know, they attempt to sign in or make any changes to their profile, etc. So it's very cost effective in that sense. Another key point, as mentioned earlier, is that this method does require a password reset. So just keep these things in mind as you plan your migration using the bulk migration approach. Let's now move on to the next approach in just-in-time migration. So true to its name, this method operates when needed. So as users come in and engage with your system and initiate transactions, you can migrate them at that very moment. Uh, in this strategy, you initiate the transition to Cognito right from the outset. So all new signups and creations are channeled through Cognito. Similarly, new signings are also directed to Cognito. However, Cognito detects when a user isn't actually present in the directory. And what this does is it prompts the initiation of a user migration flow that navigates to a Lambda function. And the user Lambda function here checks for the user with your existing user directory or database. And if there's a successful validation, the Lambda function is then triggered and it retrieves the user profile and generates a success response. And essentially what this ends up doing uh, is it ends up creating the user profile within Cognito and furnishes tokens to the friend. So from an end user perspective, it's a really seamless transition. Users are able to sign in with their same username and password that they always use. They're not aware that there's a migration happening in the background. They start with authentication, they get back tokens, and there's really no friction in the middle throughout the process whatsoever. Um, and actually in terms of a real world example of this, uh, fairly recently, the company Neiman Marcus actually was able to successfully transition customer identities from their legacy store to Cognito user directory using this approach. And, you know, their primary focus was ensuring a seamless customer experience with no disruptions. So they were able to leverage custom workflows with Cognito, utilizing Lambda functions that we just talked about. And this process actually allowed them to seamlessly migrate customers when specific events occurred, such as a sign-in attempt. And, you know, their customers experienced no visible changes in how they were able to interact with the website. Uh, so this approach really enabled, you know, a smooth transition without impacting their user base. Now that we discussed the different migration methods, let us look at a more broad overview of the process. So the first thing you want to do is you really want to evaluate the need to modernize your identity solution in the first place. So maybe it's a case where your application has had an increase in online engagement, or maybe you just want a better user experience for your users. These are things to be thinking about before even migrating. Then you want to choose a migration approach. So as discussed earlier, choose the approach based on your business requirements. You know, you want to be thinking about things like uh, the migration speed in terms of how long it will take to complete the migration, and also think about things like the complexity of the approach and how it will affect your users. Next, you want to prepare user data. So if you decided to opt for a bulk migration, prepare your user data in CSV files with the required attributes according to Cognito Schema. Or if you decided to take a just-in-time migration approach, ensure your existing user data can be validated. You then want to set up Amazon Cognito. So create an Amazon Cognito user pool, define the user schema, and configure settings like password policies and multi-factor authentication. You then want to implement a Lambda function if you are using just-in-time migration. So create a Lambda function that will be triggered when users attempt to sign in or perform authentication-related actions. This way, you'll be able to validate credentials and create user profiles within Cognito. Once you do that, you can then perform the migration based on the chosen approach. So once you've executed the migration now, you want to be aware of how this will look like for your users. So users will either reset their passwords upon first sign-in if you use the bulk migration approach, or they'll experience a seamless sign-in process if you use the just-in-time migration approach. And finally, but most importantly, you want to be able to monitor the migration process and address any issues that arise for your users to basically ensure that they had the most seamless transition possible. Now let's just quickly go over some things to consider and be aware of when migrating. Uh, so the first thing is data preparation. Uh, migration failures can result from many things, whether it be um, incomplete or improper from the data. Um, and you know, these things could potentially lead to entire import job failures or individual user import issues. So before migrating, really prioritize thorough data structuring and validation. Next, it's testing. So a lack of testing and skipping through testing of the migration process in a controlled environment. Uh, this can also lead to unexpected issues when migrating large production data. Um, and lastly, troubleshooting, right? Troubleshooting plays a pivotal role during the migration to Cognito as it really safeguards against any potential hiccups. So by closely tracking the migration process and addressing any issues, uh, you can ensure a seamless transition, minimize disruptions, uh, and maintain data integrity for your users. Now, before we wrap up, let's highlight a few of the main takeaways of migrating to Cognito. Firstly, prior to embarking on the migration journey, it's important to understand your application's authentication and identity prerequisites. Another thing to remember is that planning will be key to the success of migrating user data. So really understand the process and the approach that you choose to take when migrating user data. Also, be sure to dive into the array of integration options and customization capabilities on offer. 
And lastly, you want to effectively communicate with your users in terms of any alterations to their login experience, ensuring a seamless transition for them as well. To close, if you want to learn more and really expand your understanding and knowledge of the migration process, I really encourage you to take a look at the AWS Reinforce video that I have linked that goes through the process more deeply and highlights the several ways to approach migrating users to Amazon Cognito. In that video, you'll also get to see and hear from an actual customer in Fandango and what their migration to Amazon Cognito was like from start to finish. So I highly encourage you to check out that video and to check out the other linked resources as well. Thank you.